to store the lecture on in place. Yes? Uh, black pepper. Okay, there is the black pepper, the spice. What else? The, the first uh, ingredient that we have uh, here is what? Huh? Yes? The wrap of uh, chicken soup. <laughs> <The wrap. laughs> is there any wrap of yes. the chicken soup? The wrapper, yes. That's the first uh, ingredient that we needed here is the beef itself. And what part of the beef it is? Any part of the beef that we can put here to cook in a <laughs> what kind of uh, part of the beef is that? We call it the beef shank. Okay, yeah, the beef shank. The one that it has the bone marrow. That's why it was called the beef That's the first ingredient. What else? What can we see? Aside from the pepper. The beef shank. The potato. The potato. Yeah, there's the potato. And the potato. What else? So the black pepper. There's the black pepper. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's right. <laughs> no, it's only a shadow of the, the soup. It's not the wrapper. Okay? So, yeah. So, uh, in, in uh, cooking this, uh, to make it delectable in taste, we are needing these different ingredients. Okay? The, the, the big chunk itself, the vegetables, and the different spices. So, the same thing with our lesson for today. A narrative or a story are made up of different elements. So let us have our overview. And it says that a narrative or a story is similar to our dish. Okay? It needs the best ingredients for you to enjoy its delectable taste. Okay? So what are these uh, what are the uh, elements, or it's said to be narratives or stories are made up of five important elements. And what are these? These are, first we have the characters, second setting, third plot, fourth conflict, and number five is the theme. So meaning to say a narrative or a story will never be completed if uh, there will be no part of these elements. So again, let us recite them. What are the five uh, important elements of a story? We have the characters, setting, plot, conflict, theme. Very good. So you remember them, no? let us elaborate them now. Okay, here is the background information about narratives. Okay? So when we say narratives, narratives are also the one that we call stories. Okay? Narratives have been a part of a human culture and society for the over thousands of years. It's also a part of our childhood and some would say that life is made up of series of never-ending stories. So to develop the student's reading comprehension, you know, as a student, in order for you to develop your reading comprehension, you know, there is the essential that uh, you should accurately identify the elements of stories. Okay? It is a record of series of related events, experiences, or the likes, whether true or fictitious. So we need to say narratives has two kinds. No? There are narratives that it tells about truth and fictitious. So what are these two uh, two kinds of uh, narratives that we have? We have first the uh, fictional narrative. Uh, Lori, can you read what is fictional narrative? Fictional narrative are narratives that consist of people who can store imaginary places that are not based on history or fact. Okay, they are they are only uh, consist of people, events, or imaginary places that are not based on history or facts. Okay, and the example of this are, yeah, we have. 
fable, fairy tale, fairy tale legend, folk tales, and many more. Uh, so these are uh, imaginary only, okay? Yes. Okay, second, we have non -fic uh, fictional oh. narrative. <laughs> <laughs> Ever, can you read it? Non-fictional are the ones that represent truth and accuracy regarding information, events, or people. Okay, they are the ones that represent truth and accuracy. Okay, we call this the non-fictional narrative. And the examples are history, biographies, and autobiographies. Okay, so let us further now uh, discuss no, the, the one that made up of narratives and these are the elements. So again, uh, what are the five elements of the story? First, we have the character, no, the, the setting, the, the plot. plot, the conflict, and the theme. So let us have first the characters. So how can you define uh, or identify the characters in a story? So here is what these characters are. Uh, characters, the people, it could uh, be the people or animals of a story. The writers use character to perform the actions and speak the dialogue of a story. They are the who of the story. Meaning to say, uh, the question that being asked who, the answer here are the characters. Either they are people or animals no? that speak and perform action in the story. Okay. Uh, ayan. We have also two types of characters. Okay. What are these two types of characters? First, we have what we call the major characters that know to be the protagonist or the hero. Second, the minor characters or what we call the antagonist or the villain. Okay, so let us uh, explain it further, the two types of characters. So remember, characters, who are the characters in the story? These are the people or animals. That's why I have uh, put a background here, yeah, people and animals. Know that they are the one who speaks and performs actions in the story. Now let's just elaborate the two types of characters which are the major and minor characters. Okay, when we say protagonist, yeah. What are protagonists? Laurie, can you read it? The protagonists are also known as the hero or the good guy. Okay, they are the good guys. They are the heroes. Okay? They are known to be the main character. So those are the ones that we call protagonists that uh, they are around within the whole story revolves. Now let me see if you know this uh, following characters that I will show you. They kindly identify them. Who do you think is this one? Okay, it's Bugs Bunny. Very good. Sorry, Bugs Bunny. That's Cap Cap. <laughs> How about this one, Egbert? This is you. That's uh, Popeye. Yes, this is Popeye. Popeye the Sailor Man. Next, we have... Uh, this Winnie the Pooh. Okay, Winnie the Pooh and Friends. Yeah, Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Tigger, Tigger, and Roo. Okay. <laughs> And lastly, oh, Lori, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Elsa no, from the Frozen. So these are all examples of what we call uh, protagonists that are serves to be the hero or the good guy, and they are the main characters in a story. Okay, now you give uh, you give me an example of a protagonist in a story or in a movie. Cinderella. Okay, Cinderella. Who else? <laughs> Who else? Aside, aside uh, uh, Cinderella? Cardo. Okay, it's Cardo. Uh, from Richard Ding. Yeah? And, uh, yes, from Those are examples of protagonists. Now let us have the, 
antagonist. Okay, when we say the antagonist, the antagonist, they are also known as the villain or the bad guy. Okay, it is the opposite of the protagonist. They are the uh, minor characters. No, so these characters or group of characters, they are the one that cause conflict. No? They are the one that cause problem, conflict to the protagonist. Okay? So that's why they are called to be antagonists. So let us identify the following features who are these uh, popular antagonists. Who is this? <laughs> no, it's in the... Uh, Disney movie, uh, Little Mermaid. That's not the mermaid. Yeah, this is not the mermaid. Octopi. <laughs> this is Ursula. You are a sacrifice. This is Ursula, the one uh, oh, that made a potion for Ariel to have a, uh, a leg of a human being. Oh, you're, you're Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> Next, how about this one? That's the Lion King. That's a lion. Yeah, and the lion king. Who is the protagonist? The lion king. The uncle of Simba. The uncle of Simba. The brother of Mufasa, the king. Mufasa. It's Scar. Mufasa. Yeah, no Scar. It's Scar. Scar. Next. Ah, that's the bakate. Yes, very good. This is Captain Hook in Peter Pan. And then... Sorry. Oh, this one. <laughs> Antagonist of Cinderella. Uh, the Red Riding Hood. <laughs> no. It is the no. stepmother of Cinderella. Okay, they are known to be the antagonists. Uh, you give me an example of antagonists. <laughs> no more examples given? Oh, let us proceed. Now, the second is the setting. Okay, how can we identify the setting of a story? So, when we say setting, setting is the time and place of a story. It is usually introduced during exposition. So when you say exposition, that is the beginning of the story. Okay? Along with the characters, it is when and where a story happened. So in, in the character, the question being asked is who. Okay? In setting, the question that is being asked here is when and where. Okay? When, because it refers to the time. And where it refers to the place where the story happened. Okay? So, any question? Is it clear? Yes, okay. Let us identify this different feature on what setting do they have. What do you think is the setting of this picture? Okay, this uh, forest. It's either you can say uh, morning, uh, one morning at the forest. Okay? It's daytime. Okay. How about this one? Egbert. What setting is uh, does this picture show? Bedroom. Bedroom or that, the house? That's uh, that's, uh, that's what they do in one house. <laughs> it's a bedroom or the house and the time we can say there is a clock. Oh. It's 9 o'clock either morning or That's evening. evening one. Okay, what is the plot? And where can you read 
Shrimad is flat. The sequence of events that make up a story is the beginning, middle, and ending of a story built around conflict, which is a struggle, uh, struggles between opposing forces. Okay, so when we say the plot, so in the plot, it shows the sequence of the events of the story. Now, there is the beginning, which is the expository, the middle, which is the climax, and the ending, which is the resolution. Now, in, in the plot, it is where the conflict is being built, you know, the struggles between opposing forces. So let me show you the parts of a plot you know, for us to further to discuss it and know okay, yeah, this, these are the parts of a plot. So first, the first part of the plot, as you can see, is the, the horizontal line, it is the expository. Okay, so the first part is, I know, I'm sorry, exposition, I mean, the exposition. So when we say exposition, it means the beginning of the story where characters and setting are introduced. Okay, and then second, it is the rising action, and then going up, the line going up to the climax. Rising action, uh, it is where the main character faces a series of conflicts and then the third one we have the climax the most this is the most exciting part of the story where we learn the outcome so the climax is the middle part of the story number four so from the climax it's going down on the line we're going down and we, uh, we call this the falling action okay. and the last one the resolution or the end of the story. So those are the things that we should remember about the parts of the plot. Uh, the exposition, which is the beginning. Okay, and then there is the rising action, you know, where is there's the series of conflicts. Climax, which is the middle part of the story that uh, it is the most exciting part. For the falling action leading to the end of the story. And number five, resolution, which is the end of story. Okay? So let us have now our fourth one, or the fourth uh, elements of narrative, which is conflict. Okay, what is conflict? Conflict, the challenges or problem that drives a story. It is the battle or struggle of two forces. The series of cause and effect that gives it the why of the story. So in the conflict, the question that being asked here is the why question. Okay? Here are the types of conflict that we have. What are the, the struggles that is being uh, uh, that is happening or that could be happening in a story. The first conflict we have, character versus the character. So meaning to say the, the protagonist and the antagonist itself. No? So character versus character, a problem between two characters of the story. Okay, just like in the picture, yeah. We are arguing two characters, a man and a woman. Okay? Second, we have characters versus nature. Okay? Uh, a problem between a character and some elements of nature, such as weather, animals, etc. Yeah, just like in the picture, the character, the man, having a problem with the weather. Huh? The rain and thunderstorm. Okay? And then third, character versus society. Okay? Uh, when we say character versus society, this is a conflict working a problem between a, a character and some elements of society like the laws, the needs of group of people or community, and many more. So, ayan, an example of picture, ayan, the character was caught by a policeman. So, meaning to say, it's a character between the society, either he or she against the law. Okay. The fourth one, we have character versus supernatural. 
Okay, this is a conflict that shows a problem between a character and a known or scientifically unexplained force. Okay, so an example of this picture, ayan, a character and a dragon. So that is super natural. And lastly, we have character versus self. Okay, it is a conflict, a problem between a character and a decision or feeling within his or her self. Ha? Deciding. Deciding what to do or think. It is an inner conflict. Yeah, thinking. Ha? The individual's thinking what he or, or what are the things that he should do or not do. Okay, so again, let us review the types of conflict. We have five. Character versus character. Okay, then we have character versus nature, character versus society, character versus supernatural, and character versus self. Okay, let's uh, let me find out if you remember them. Kindly identify uh, the picture. What type of conflict does the picture show? What do you think does the picture show as a conflict? Character versus society. Okay, let us find out if it's correct. Okay, great job, Herbert. No, it's character versus society. Okay, why this is a character versus society? Because the character is uh, have a struggle or conflict between a group of people. Okay, how about this one? What type of conflict is this? Does the picture show? Yes, yes, uh, Lori. Character versus supernatural. Okay, character versus supernatural. Let's find out. What do you believe in that? Okay, character versus supernatural. Why this is character versus supernatural? Because there is the ghost or the unknown. Are they real? It, it could be in a uh, fictional narrative. How about this one? Character versus self. Okay, let's find out. Good job! I heard character versus self because there are the two questions. So the good and bad. I see myself on the right type line. How about this one? What type of conflict does the picture show? Character versus character. Character versus character. Good job, I heard. Huh? And the last picture. The last two pictures. Uh, we have already the character versus supernatural. Character versus nature. Okay. It's character versus nature. Not the eruption of volcano and the animals. Very good. Huh? And you give yourself a round of applause. Okay, lastly, the, the last uh, part of the element is the theme. Okay, what is the theme? Theme is the moral or idea that the writer would like to express throughout the story. It's sometimes called as the message. Uh, it is the message of the story. Yeah. Be reminded, the message of the story can be stated or implied. No? Sometimes, the, the theme of the story uh, could be stated in the story or usually they are not being stated. No? We have to imply it. Okay? So, for you to easy to remember it, yeah. when we say theme, a lesson taught through a story. Okay? It is the lesson taught through a story or it is the message in the story. What did you learn from this story that you can apply in your real life? situation. So that, uh, those are the three. Okay? So any question regarding uh, the elements of the story? Okay, so again, what are the five important elements of the story that we have? We have the characters, setting, the plot, the conflict, and the theme. Okay, so now let us let us read uh, an example of narrative or story.
body and let us develop its elements. Okay, have you heard the story of Maria Magdalene? Yeah, let us read it. Okay, uh, Mama uh, Lori, can you read the first paragraph of the story? The story of Maria Magdalene. Once upon a time, there was a mysterious baby named Maria Magdalene. Who is said to be guarding Mount Magdalene. No one knows how old she is. It is believed she is as old as the mountain itself. The very few people who have seen her wandering around the thick wandering the thick, the thick forest of Mahili say she is tall and graceful, with brown skin, deep black eyes, and hair almost touching the ground. Deer hunters have seen her standing on the edge of a cliff on moonlit nights, with her long hair floating in the air and her singing echoing throughout the deep valleys. Okay, Edward, kindly continue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The are second you, and third paragraph. Are you feeling like to appear after a storm? She strolls around the woods to straight and broken trunks, her place nest on the branches of trees, mend the wings of butterflies, and clear the streets of fallen trees and lungs. As she walks around, all signs of the storm disappear. Roses and orchids bloom, birds chirp with bees and deer run around once again. Maria Mahalimov is also known to have a good heart. She would appear as a young girl to help old women gather firewood. She would then slip gold nuggets, coins, and jewels into their bundle of wood. She would also invite tired hunters to her home, where she would serve them a warm meal and cold drinks. She also gives them a small part and gift of ginger, which hunters discover to have turned into gold when they arrive home. Okay, so many of those who were granted Maria Magdalene's generosity knows well how to repay her kindness. They thus leave on the grounds of Mount Magdalene, a hen that is less than one year old and with feathers as white as milk. White hens are her favorite chicks. Maria Magdalene has often appeared as an old woman begging for food from hunters. She does this to test her kindness to those in need. People who refuse to help her are chased away from the forest with the sound of howling monsters hiding in the shadow of the woods. As time went by, people saw less of Maria Makili. She no longer appears to people to bring them gifts as gold of gold and jewels. Hunters have no one to turn to when they are hungry and thirsty. So many blame Maria Magdalene's disappearance from the forest on the people who do not return her generosity. Others say that the cutting of trees and excessive hunting of wild animals have greatly disappointed Maria Magdalene, that she refuses to come out anymore. But the tale of the mysterious fairy of Mount Makili lives on. Okay, now, so let us develop the five key elements of a story. Okay, so from that story, who are the characters? And uh, let us describe them. No description. Maria Makili. Okay, Maria Makili. Okay, how can we describe Maria Makili? Okay. Tall and graceful, with brown skin, big black eyes, and hair almost touching the ground. She is generous and has a good heart. Who else? Who else is the character we have in? Hunters. Okay, we can describe them as good and Selfish, okay? Because uh, some of them do not know how to repay 
the kindness and generosity of Maria Makili that shows them. Okay? Next. Who got the Bible? Setting. What do you think is the setting? In the mountain. Okay, once upon a time in a forest of Mount Makili. Okay? Now the plot. Here are the plot. Okay, remember the plot should be sequenced, no, in proper order: the beginning, the middle, and ending. So the uh, the beginning or the introduction is there is a mysterious fairy named Maria Makiling who is said to be gardening or guarding Mount Makiling. She invites tired hunters to her home serve them a warm meal and cold drinks, Maria Makili has often appeared as an old woman begging her food from hunters. She does this to test their kindness to those in need. That is our introduction. Okay, the middle part or the climax yeah, would be the people who refuse to help her are chased away from the forest with the sound of howling monsters hiding in the shadows of wood. And the ending of the story of our plot, many blame Maria Makini's disappearance from the forest on the people who do not return their generosity. But the tale of the mysterious fairy of Mount Makini lives on. So those are the plot of the story. Now let us have the conflict. Okay, what do you think is the conflict of the story? It's the disappearance, no? But many blame Maria Makili's disappearance from the forest on the people who do not return her generosity. And what is the theme? What is the moral lesson you've learned from the story about Maria Makili? It's about being generous. Okay, being generous, no? generosity and forgiveness. forgiveness. Okay? Yeah. So do you know now how to develop the five key uh, elements of the story? Now let us have first uh, the activity A. What are you going to do here is read the story, uh, the story about how the first hat was taken. This is a Philippine cocktail of Igorot. Then match uh, the elements of the story on column A given examples on column B. Also, just write the letter of your answer on the space provided for the number. Okay, so I will uh, give you a minute to read it. Oh, I will just read it for you. How the first set was taken. Philippine cocktail, paper off. One day, the, uh, the moon who was a woman named Kabita sat out in the yard making a large copper pot. The copper pot, the copper was still soft and feeble like clay. And the woman squatted on the ground with a heavy pot against her knees while he squatted and shaked it. Now, while she was working, a son of Pachat the sun came by and stopped to watch her mold the form. Against the inside of the jar, she pressed a stone, while on the outside in the wooden puddle, dripping with water, she pounded and slapped until she had worked down the bulges and formed a smooth surface. The boy was greatly interested in seeing the jar grow larger, more beautiful, and smoother with each stroke, and he stood still for some time. Suddenly, Moon looked up and saw him watching her. Instantly, she struck him with her paddle, cutting off his head. Now the sun was not near, but he knew as soon as the sun the moon had cut off his son's head and hurrying to the spot. He put the boy's head back on and he was alive again. Then the sun said to the moon, You cut off my son's head and because you did this, ever after on, on earth, people will cut off each other's head. Okay, so now let us have the activity. From the story, let us match column A with column 
to deal with the elements of the story. So in column A, we have uh, the five key elements. No? They are not arranged. No? We have the conflict, the theme, the plot, characters, and the setting. So from column, column A, match them uh, with a given example that's from uh, the story. Right? In letter B, yeah, letter A, Revenge Forgiveness. B, One Day in the Yard. C, Kabigat, Pachal and Boy. D, Kabigat, Chop Off, the Head of Pachal's Son. E, One Afternoon in the Forest. And letter F, Kabigat was making a large copper pot. He cut off the boy's head. Then Pachal's son enjoyed to watch him. Pachal was so angry. What do you think is the answer in number one? Conflict. What do you think is the conflict or the, the problem that has happened in the story? Okay, letter D. Let's find out. It's uh, correct. Okay, very good. It's letter D. The conflict in the story is the biggest part of the head of uh, Charles Sack. How about the thing? What do you think is the moral lesson of the story? The lesson thought. Is that our yes story? Letter A, let's find out. Okay, very good. Big job. It's revenge and forgiveness. Okay, how about the plot? The one that has a sequence series of events. Yeah. It's letter F. Okay, very good. Cool. It's letter F. Okay, how about the characters? C. C. Let's find out. Yes, very good. It's letter C. Okay, Kabiga, Kalchal, and the board. And lastly, the setting. It's letter B. One day in the yard. Okay, so is it difficult? No. No, no, it's very easy as long as you do understand uh, the five key uh, elements of the story. You will understand or it, is, it will be easy for you to identify these key elements of the story. So in reading, you have to understand it very carefully so that you can identify these five key elements. Okay, let us have the second activity that we have. Activity B. Again, read uh, another book tale, okay, and answer the following question on the space provided. This is about the boy who became a stone. Lori, can you read it, please? The boy who became a stone. Read the book tale in one day, a little boy named Elohim sat out in the yard. Here he is, 
Then the old woman tried to open the stone, but she could not. So she called the horses to come and help her. They came and kicked it, but it would not break. Then she called the carabao and they cooked it, but they only broke their horns. She called the chickens, which pecked it, and the thunder, which took it, but not the to look at it. And she had to go home without the word. Now, let us answer the question about that story in identifying the key or the five key elements of the story. Number one, give the two characters in the story. And what are their description? L M. M. Who else? He loves the birds. Yeah, Elonen, a boy who loves birds and hates snare. Very good, Lori. Who else is the character in the story? Grandmother. The grandmother. How can we describe the grandmother? That's the grandchild. Okay. Grandmother who loves her grandchild dearly. Very good, Lori. Okay, now second, let us have the second question. When and where did the story happen? One day in the yard. One day in the yard and forest. Okay. Very good. The third one. The sequence three events that made up a story. So what do you think was the first uh, thing happened in the story as the introduction? Ellen mm -hmm. caught a bird. Ellen caught a bird. Makes a snare in order to caught the bird. Yeah, Ellen caught a bird using a snare and put it in a jar. Okay, and what happened? His mother was hungry, hungry, and she cooked the bird and ate it. Okay. How about the middle part? The middle part. Is it already the way you uh, become a stone? His grandmother cooked the bird. There is already the she cooked the bird. And earlier, the boy was sad and he wished to. The boy was sad and wished to have the stone. Okay, let us uh, find it. You have the correct answer. I am the boy who was sad and wished to let the stone would eat him. Okay? And what do you think is the ending of the story? The boy became a stone. The boy became a stone. What else? His grandmother went home. Okay. His grandmother went home. Okay. Hello, man. Ayan. We have the correct answer that the both of both you alone and become a stone. And his grandmother <clears throat> went home alone because no one could break the stone. So those are the sequence of the story. Let us have the fourth question. What do you think is the conflict of the story? What was the problem in the story? When, when the boy is missing and the uh, Lola. The boy is missing. Huh? And the grandma could not bring his grandson anymore. Okay? Number five, what do you think is the theme of the story? So, love. So love. Love and creativity. Now, love refers to the grandmother who loves his uh, grandchild dearly. The creativity uh, shows the creativeness of the boy in making a snare in order to catch bird. That's why those are the lessons of love and Okay, very good. Any question? So for our last activity, now you're going to read the legend of the first bananas. <laughs> then complete. You're going to complete this one. Now you're going to complete a story map. Okay? You will be the one who will write your own answer. Now you're going to complete the story map having the title, the characters, the setting, the
the plot by writing the sequence events from introduction, middle, and ending, and then we have the conflict and the day. Okay, so are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Okay, later on I will give you uh, this construction paper in order for you to write your answer and you will going to paste it in the proper order to complete our story map. So let us read it first. So again, the only time you read it, uh, the first part of the story. The legend of the first banana. Once upon a time, Once upon a time there was a beautiful girl called Maria. She was tall with black eyes and long shiny hair. The color of her skin was clear like brown. One morning, while she was collecting firewood, she met a young man. He looked like a hunter. He was tall, handsome, and very neatly dressed. No one knew who he was or where he came from, nor did anyone know him, know his name. Maria liked him. He liked her too. Maria did not know his speech, but he was an anito or a spirit from the sky. They became friends, although they were good friends for a long time. The young man never asked Maria to become, to become his wife. Edward, can you read the succeeding part? This made Maria very unhappy. I have no parents or brothers or sisters, she said. You two are alone. I'm sure we could be happy together. I didn't want to tell you this. The young man said, but I am an anito. I cannot marry a human being. I have to return to the sky. Maria was surprised. She did not know what to say. She held his hand tightly. Please let me go, said the young man. I have hoped to never find out who I am. There was a tiny flash of light and the young man disappeared. But as Maria was holding on, his hand so tightly, he left them behind. Uh, behind. Of course, but he was frightened. She ran home and buried them in her garden. Soon she saw a snake plant growing where she had buried them. The plants grew fast. Then some fruit appeared. It was yellow and shaped like a man's hand with fingers on it. It was the first banana. And that was the Legend of the first banana. So what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> complete. You're going to complete the story map of the legend of the first bananas by writing its elements. So this is uh, what that you're going to do here. Huh? So I will be giving you these uh, papers. Uh, you can do this as a team, uh, teamwork. Group work. Egbert, kindly help uh, Lori to uh, to answer this. Uh, in order for you to complete the story map, I will give you five minutes. So small.
now check the one that you have done as a story map if you develop the five key elements of the story from the story about the legend of the first banana. So again, here is, our, is your story map. The title of the story is The Legend of the First Banana. Red. Okay. Very good. So red. Now, let us have the key elements first. Who are the characters in the story? We have Maria and the young man or the Anito. Good. The setting, once upon a time or one morning in the forest. Good job. Okay, now let us have the plot. Well, that was done by Egbert. The introduction, the middle, and the ending of the story. Let's find out if it has the proper sequence. So introduction. It says here, one morning while Maria was collecting firewood, she met a young man that no one knew who he was, and both of them liked each other. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. The middle part, Maria was very sad when she knew that the young man is an Anito. An Anito cannot marry a human being and he should return in the sky. Yeah, this is the middle part because this is the climax of the story. Correct. Okay, and the ending of the story, Maria was frightened when the young man disappeared, leaving his hands behind. So Maria buried them. No? And, uh, and soon, a strange plant grew with fruit, with color yellow and shaped like man's hands with fingers on it. It was the first banana. So very good. This is the ending of the story. And the conflict was Maria, Maria and the young man can marry each other. Why? Why do you think they cannot marry each other? Okay, because the young man is an Anito and an Anito cannot marry a human being. So that was the conflict. And our theme is yeah, it's a forbidden love. So, very good. Kindly give uh, a round of applause to yourself. Uh, you have a great job. So, do you understand now the five key elements of uh, narrative or story? Any question? Any question? <laughs> yes, not personal, just uh, about <laughs>